No. If we turn our bob. Hold on a minute. Now. Hold on. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, it's a beautiful day in this name. A beautiful day to kill Mr. Rogers. Oh, yeah. Mr. Rogers is the potter that all of you got to watch out for. Would you please listen to Mickey? Mr. Rogers is Leviathan. He is put the potter so. Let's make the most of this Bible study. Since we're together, we might as well acknowledge Mr. Patat is the mother flipping potter. Mr. Patat, Leviathan. Leviathan is the potter. Alright. Ah. Most of you are wondering, why am I here on YouTube? You know me. If you, might, if you recognize my voice, you might know me. But you might not know me. So, whatever. A couple of months ago, uh, the potter took down the YouTube channel. Because I was showing you too much truth about who Fred Rogers is. Fred Rogers is the potter. And you don't know yet what I'm talking about. But... I will get into it here, but in the meantime, a lot of you are wondering, the potter, aren't we the clay and thou art mm. the potter? Well, you know, mm. what are you doing here that you've been graving yourself a place in the rock? Yeah, yeah. And what I'm here to tell you is that the potter is not yeah. God like you're always wanting <clears throat> to think he is. Mm. Let's turn to yeah. Lam Lamentations, chapter 4. Mm. Lamentations, chapter 4. Uh, mm. This Bible is so <clears throat> big. How do you find it? Even if you memorize where everything is, it's, it's still hard to find. All right. Lamentations, chapter 4. Chapter 4. Lamentations chapter 4. <clears throat> How the gold has mm. lost its luster. Mm. The fine gold become dull. The sacred gems are scattered at every street corner. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> It's funny how we got many Mouse's Boltons in the background. No. Okay, we need to cut and start over. From the we might get a copyright block if we have that going on in the background and stuff. You know, why the serpents and stuff like that, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Be careful for nothing, as the King James Bible says. But the King James Bible is a whole nother can of worms, man. King James Bible, in the beginning of Genesis, right in the third chapter, chapter 3, verse 15, the very first mention of Jesus, they call him an it. My Jesus is not an it or a neuter it. And in the King James Bible, it says, It shall bruise thy head, as in 
Jesus only bruises Satan's head. Or in putting plain, you can't deny it, terms, Mickey bruises Mr. Rogers' head, according to the King James Bible. Or if the King James Bible is authored by Mr. Rogers himself, then it's Mr. Rogers bruising Miss Mickey's head. And that's why they cannot say crush thy head because it's Mr. Rogers and Mr. Rogers cannot crush Mickey's head because he is the devil and Mickey Mouse is God. And if you don't believe me, read Revelation, Eyes of Fire, Vesture Dipped in Blood. You, you know, you read Revelation millions of times, people, and then you look at Mickey Mouse, and yet you, you still don't believe that's okay. M Mickey's merciful. He's going to forgive you. He'll remember your inequities no more. That's why he has the Mandela effect changed a few things here and there to reveal the truth of the spirit behind things. Like Mr. Rogers, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, but now it's a beautiful day in Disney neighborhood because it's a beautiful day in Disney. But it's a but Mr. Rogers is trying to declare it's a beautiful day in his own neighborhood because that's what his heart was feeling all along, even when he was singing it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So the change to it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood to it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood reveals Mr. Rogers as the nefarious bastard child that he is. And also, it reveals the coded message. If you look at the coded message, it's a beautiful day in Disney neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in Disney neighborhood. And just think about that for a moment. And then when you look at the King James Bible and how King James only has has propagated that for years and decades and centuries, man. You don't have any idea how much of a delusion we all been under, man. The King James only people, they want to smear Westcott and Hart just like most people want to smear Disney. But Westcott and Hart, they were misquoted by the King James only people. And then they want to say that that's the only true Bible and stuff. Limiting Jesus' sovereignty over everybody and stuff. And they just, they want to put, make it to where that God has the power to only communicate to you through King James Bible English. And that if you don't believe in the King James Bible, then you'll be damned to hell forever and stuff. That's what they want you to believe. And it's like, good God, man. Jesus Christ told you that it's about believing in him and what he did on the cross and how he resurrected and all that. It's about that. It's not about about that you gotta have faith in the KJ's Bible or you're not saved. Jesus never said that! If we look at Lamentations chapter 4 2 we'll get to that here. Let's just tell you right up in front that God is not the potter. <clears throat> okay. How we might as well just read the whole chapter, right? We got how much like what forty minutes or so? I don't know. I might edit background music in here later and I might have edited it early on in the audio so you don't know you know, you we don't know how this is gonna turn out. I'm doing this off the cuff. I'm doing it uh I'm trying to do it as live as I can to, to be organic and real. Because if I try to edit it, then people are going to assume that it's fake and not real. Because, you know, they only want to think of live things as real for some reason. And not everything live is real. Technically, the things that were never meant to happen.
are not real. So technically, the Tiedemann Square incident where the guy gets ran over by a tank, that was never real. That's why Mickey changed it and Jesus made it all better and took away death in that instance in time. But then everybody wants to assume that, oh, that's evil, that's the Antichrist. Well, Mr. Rogers, he's the granddaddy of the Antichrist, who's Barack Obama, if you look at Luke 10, 18. But, at, you know, that's another story for another matter and stuff. Barack Obama, he spent so much money hiding his true identity. And then... CERN Switzerland, they spend so much time and money going through and trying to change themselves. What are we talking about again? Oh yeah, CERN tries to take credit for changing the Bible. Maybe they did. Maybe they did it. And in the meantime, they're using it to change themselves into demons incarnate. Or if they're not turning themselves into demons incarnate, they are at the very least trying to manifest demons on Earth and trying to bring Mr. Rogers out from the abyss. You think Mr. Rogers is a nice guy and stuff? I thought so too. I went in and tried to restore it. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And it almost killed me. Not because I died for Jesus' sake. No, it's because the wages of sins are death, man. <sighs> this thing is so deep and elaborate. You have no idea what Mr. Rogers is capable of. But he's not capable of anything, you see. That's the whole irony in the dichotomy of it. Mr. Rogers is totally conscious of nothing. He knows nothing. He sees nothing. He hears nothing. And yet somehow he's aware that his theme song is changed in such a way to where he wants to rebel against Mickey and change his theme song back to a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Because we need to restore our past. No, it's not about restoring our past, folks. It's about progressing to Jesus' new world order. And I said that on purpose because that way the Pharisees can do their little childish accusations. Because in the new world order, there's at least two new world orders. There's Jesus' New World Order, and there's Satan's New World Order. And you want to focus more on the Jesus than the Satan. If you focus too much on the Satan, then you get lost, and everybody is like, that's into too much Satan exposing. They just don't understand what they're doing. Because some kid... Browsing through Facebook. Alright. They're totally innocent. Of some of the stuff that's going on. And then they hear about some Pope Francis thing. And then it's like. Up until that point. They never knew about Pope Francis. They were innocent to the evil of Pope Francis. But then. You had to be so up and righteous and exposed, Mr. Pope Francis, that this kid is basically and inevitably eaten from the tree of knowledge through Mr. Rogers through your vessel. And then forevermore, up until Jesus does something about it, he just keeps on thinking about that Pope Francis and stuff. And all thanks to you for exposing Pope Francis to that poor innocent child. However, when that child is watching TV and Mr. Rogers is the one thing that they watch, of course you have to, exp you have to expose evil if they're already exposed to it and they don't think it's a big deal. 
But if they're innocent of the evil and they don't know about the evil, then you're supposed to just conceal it from them because the Bible says something along the lines of be innocent to what's evil and to be wise in what is good. So, the child... It's necessity for a child to be warned about Mr. Rogers because Mr. Rogers goes after the child at a young age. But it's not like the child needs to know about Hellfire because technically Hell is a mistranslation of the King James Bible and it's supposed to be Hades and stuff and even Mr. Even King James only is people will tell you that it's supposed to be Hades and not hell. Because Hades is going to have a distinction, but if you call both hell, then you don't know what the difference is. Yeah. You don't know anything. I don't know anything. None of us know anything. We all think we know everything, but we don't. We all just, we're all just clueless about everything that's going on in the world. We're too busy focusing on politics while we're scoffing and mocking cartoons when cartoons are the one thing where the truth lies. Because Jesus shows himself as Mickey Mouse, which is the leader of all the cartoons. So if Jesus is the author of all truth, and he manifests himself in the form of Mickey Mouse, does it not tell you that he has a high opinion or view or truth or whatever word you want to attribute to his feeling about that? If, if he, does he does it not like make any sense to you, man? I'm sure it makes sense to me, but he manifests himself as Mickey Mouse. And Mickey Mouse is the king of all cartoons. And people want to scoff and mock cartoons as being fake and not real. Man, that's the one. That's the. That, may, Mickey ha, ha, may, ha, may Walt Disney have mercy on your soul, man. Cartoons are the one thing where where there's truth. Everything outside of cartoons has fabrications and lies and twisted truths that are partial truths, but they leave out the truths. Like when King James only as they say there's multiple missing verses in the the modern Bibles. They will not tell you that the missing verses that they're telling you about is somewhere else in a parallel passage. Like in, like they might, the modern Bibles might be omitting a verse from Mark, but still retains that same verse in Luke. But the King James people, they don't tell you that. And they don't tell you that Westcott and Hart are misquoted by Benjamin Wilkinson, which... Basically, up until that point, it's like, now, since Benjamin Wilkinson misquoted Westcott and Hort, they all, everybody's read up and are used to King James Bible being the one true word of God, even to the point where it's the word of God, and it's, and but then they also say that Jesus is the word of God. So they're basically calling the King James Bible Jesus so much so that if the Ark of the Covenant which is supposed to reflect Jesus' humanity and divinity he hit the Ark of the Covenant is supposed to be made out of acacia wood because it's the finest wood there is But the King James Bible, that the Seventh Day of Vantus basically conditioned us to basically form a King James only movement to push that version above all other versions, even above Jesus. What's wrong with us? 
Benjamin Wilkinson, he quoted Miss, he quoted Westcott and Hort in such a way to smear them and to put us in bondage to one version of the Bible that's under Mr. Rogers' control. And then they scare us away from the Bible, say, Mickey has authored and protected and preserved. Come on, man. Do you think that that it's not plausible that Jesus could protect the scriptures by having the Jews scattered throughout the world and they bury copies after copies of scriptures underground, like under the sands of Egypt or whatever. That's not plausible. And all oh, Alexandria is evil. A mighty Jew was born in Alexandria who was mighty in the scriptures. There's nothing wrong with Antioch, but it's not like Jesus doesn't have sovereignty over Alexandria. <clears throat> so, um, okay, so we got, uh, okay, um, one of the things I want to read to you. Excuse me. Um, uh, Isaiah. No, not Isaiah 11, 6. Isaiah 11, 6, there's a controversy going around about whether it's lion or wolf dwelling with the lamb. I'll tell you what, folks, it's both. Both are equally true. Study about the wolf of Benjamin in scripture. Study about the war roaring lion seeking whom he may devour in scripture. There's good wolves and bad wolves and bad lions and good lions. Taking that into account. Taking that into account, people. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You've been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. The nations of dominations. Sorry, not to add any words. Okay. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You've been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly on the uh, utter, utmost heights of Mount Zephon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Oh my God. I called Jesus... Satan. Did I really call Jesus Satan? Because look at look at look at Revelation now. Uh, Revelation. I, Jesus, I'm not Jesus, I'm just reading out of the book, so I'm not declaring myself to be Jesus here. Take it in, within the context, people. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Okay, if we were to stop right there... Oh my God! I'm a I, I I called Jesus Satan. Oh my God! What have I done? And I'm oh, this is why people need to read the King James version because they need to read the word Lucifer and how are thou fallen from heaven? Okay, but.
Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What happened here? What? What's going on? What? What? What's going on here? Okay, according to the Bible, and you can look this up in your King James Bible too. And I did not cite where how our thou fallen from heaven came from, because we know where that came from. We know that I am the bright morning star that Jesus says in there. We know where that's from. But since a lot of people seem to neglect this passage, I'm going to basically put it out on the table. Job chapter 38 verse 5 through verse 7. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know who stretched a measuring line across it. On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars, did you catch that? While the morning stars sing together and all the angels shouted for joy. Look that up in your King James Bible. Chapter Job 38 verse 7. The morning stars. Look that up and it's in the King James Bible too, man. It's not a modern Bible version thing, dude. Scripture with scripture makes everything sense. <sighs> okay. What are we looking up now? We've been trying we've been preaching hard here today. And Uh oh. What do we have here? Oh. Oh. This, this Bible just has so much stuff, like, you don't even know where to read out or from. I, this is a totally improvised video. I'm doing this off the cuff. I just set up the recording equipment and just hit record and went. I, I'm just doing this off the cuff. I didn't have anything pre-planned or... I didn't have notes prepared or anything. I'm just doing this off the fly. Uh, where is that passage? See, they try to obscure this one from people. And this is why so many people worship the potter. is because they don't look at this passage. <clears throat> Alright. Okay, so... Yeah. Want to be really clear on this. How the gold has lost its luster. The fine gold will become dull. The sacred gems are scattered at every street corner. How the precious children of Zion, once worth their weight in gold, are now considered as pots of clay, the work of a potter's hands! Woo! That proves that the potter's the devil, man! Oh, that's not enough proof? Okay, okay, okay. What more proof? Um... Okay. Zechariah chapter 11 verse 12 through verse 13. I told them, if you think it best, give me my pay. But if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. 
Verse, uh, Zechariah chapter 11, verse 13. And the Lord said to me, Draw it to the potter! The handsome price at which they valued me. So I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them to the potter at the house of the Lord. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. The potter is the devil, and Mr. Rogers is the potter because Bata is the potter, and Bata is Mr. Rogers, so Mr. Rogers is the potter, the devil. Um. May I recommend James White and his biblical knowledge and wisdom? He does stuff that's far more sophisticated than I do. I'm just a rookie level of knowledge and wisdom. He's like, wow, dude. The King James only people cannot stand James White. Let me tell you. Oh. <sighs> Now, I may be human, I might not be perfect. So, I may or may not remember the exact spot where it says the, the graving is pie in the rock. There's something in there about in the in. Either Isaiah or Psalms. Check Isaiah or Psalms about the... Or just look up and Google search. What are you doing here? Engraving your spot in the rock. Something like that. It's like you have to word it a certain way because they have steered that. But the potter, the devil, he put himself in the rock, which is the word which... Jesus is the word, and the Bible is the word of God, and now you're telling me I'm a hypocrite, because how dare you call out King James only as for exalting the... Well, here's the difference, okay? King James only people, they want to call King James the word of God, and is so much that the word of God doesn't change, while acknowledging Jesus is the word of God. Just look at Gil Ripplinger. Okay, they acknowledge Jesus is the Word of God, but they equate the King James Bible as the Word of God in so much that the Word of God doesn't change, as in it's Jesus because it doesn't change or something. I, I can't even make sense of it to explain it to you. But the Word of God with the Bible in general and Jesus, Jesus is the, the Word of God manifest in the flesh. Like... Like, he's like a person that would just be sitting next to you or whatever. He's the, he, that's the word of God in the flesh. If you have Mickey Mouse hanging out with you in your physical presence, that's the word of God. However, the Bible is the written word of God. So they are distinct and yet harmonized and one. But King James people want to denied Mandela effect so much so that they say that it's that the King James Bible is the word of God because the word of God doesn't change and Jesus is the word of God because he doesn't change so therefore the King James Bible is Jesus that's what they'll try to they might not tell you that word for word but that's what they'll insinuate alright and now the Mandela effect it might be true there might be supernatural stuff going on, but let me tell you, people, it's not all evil. Some of it is good. It's a spiritual war. Look at Daniel chapter 725, and this is why people think that the Mandela effect is all evil, right? <clears throat> okay, let me find it here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, I need to, I, I, okay, uh, yeah, I admit I need to read the Bible more, but at the same time, that doesn't make the Mandela effect untrue. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm talking about here. 
if I can find it, because the Bible is such a big book. Even if you know the whole thing, you still have a hard time finding it. Okay. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Okay. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the sad times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times, and a half a time. So, people read that and they're like, oh, Mr. Rogers is from beautiful day in the neighborhood to this neighborhood. Oh, Satan did that. Or, oh, the King James Bible words are changing inside of it. Oh, Satan did that. Why is everybody attributing everything to Satan and giving him power and authority when God has sovereign control over everything? He even has sovereign control over this video that I'm doing, and I don't even know if it's constituted as a video, if it's just me reading, doing stuff. Okay. We got about how much? Uh, maybe about 10 minutes left before they cut me off. Uh, before Mr. Rogers' cronies come and, and cut my microphone power off. Okay, um, Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. Da Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. Or wait a minute, we could just start from verse 20. Praise be to the name of God. Forever and ever, wisdom and power are His. He changes times and seasons. He dep he deposes kings and raises up others. I'm not sure I pronounced that right, but whatever, I'm trying. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He, he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and lie dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. So, in Daniel, in two places, it talks about God and Satan changing times. So, the Mandela Effect is not all Satan doing it, people, friends. It's God doing it, too. Mr. Rogers is a fine example of that. Back in 2016, that's when I first discovered that I, quote-unquote, misremembered the Mr. Rogers song. Okay. What does misremember mean? Because we can have so many different little explanations and dictionary definitions. But let me tell you what misremembering means in this regard. Like Mr. Roger Simpson. We did, as children, growing up watching Mr. Rogers, we did hear the audio say, It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We heard his voice say that. We, It's true. We did hear that. But, it's a false memory because it was not meant to be like that. It never happened ultimately in New Jerusalem. And New Jerusalem is trying to manifest itself. But people keep fighting it and resisting it and thinking they're doing God's service and stuff. Like they want to keep drawing to evil and then they wonder why God hasn't come yet. And I wonder why God hasn't come yet either. You know, I'm, I'm a sinner just like all of you people, you know? We're all sinners. Anyway, we were talking something about in Revelation, right? Yeah. 
Um, let's get back to that. But in the meantime, it's like the Mandela effect's happening. Mr. Rogers seems to change. Oh, no, oh yeah. New Jerusalem's manifesting. In New Jerusalem, God's reality, Walt Disney's reality, Mickey Mouse's reality, Minnie Mouse's reality, their reality say that Mr. Rogers has always said it's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. Regardless of what we experience in our past, we have to deny ourselves in so much as that we have to acknowledge Jesus and put him above ourselves. We are to deny ourselves love, like from our wives or a woman's husband or whatever. But Denying ourselves as in, it's like, who cares if Mr. Rogers said it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood? I want Jesus' reality, not my reality. My reality stick takes that that's what he said when I was growing up as a child. But what does God's reality say that how it should have been when I was a child? You know, there's at least two reality possibilities. There may be more. But there's at least God's reality and Satan's reality and then everything in between. We have an image of Christ and an image of the beast. We are both righteous in Jesus' eyes. But we're also filthy, rotten, evil bastards in Satan's eyes. And God's going to divide the image of the beast and the image of Christ. Someday. Maybe when we're ready for it, I guess. Because, you know, he has the power to do it now if he wanted to. He has the power to do it as I'm recording this recording. But, obviously, we believe and we think in our clay vessels of the Father, we think that there's something holding Jesus back from manifesting his true reality to its full glory. And maybe it's nothing holding him back maybe he's just timing everything a certain way because god's timing is perfect they say and we're running out of time here we got about a minute or so to close off with something so we'll just close off with something about genesis 3 or something i don't know we'll do rand we'll do something random we'll do something random uh, they have greatly oppressed me for my youth. Let Israel say, they have greatly oppressed me for my youth, but they have not gained the victory over me. Plowmen have plowed my back and made their furrows long, but the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free from the cords of the wicked. All right, now stop right there because we're running out of time, but... I want you to know that you can trust the Bible regardless if it's King James Version or a modern version because Mickey is in control regardless of what Mandela effect changes are happening to it. Peace.